2 14 p.m district court defendant lobby number three question dude i can't believe that adrian no way not cool and collected adrian andrews she is your manager it would have been very easy for her to pull this off the only person who had easy access to the knife you used at dinner as well was her so after the ceremony during the break huh i was I was sleeping like a log the entire time. See, she could have also easily planted that blood-covered button in your hakama. Because she was the one who came to wake me up? Then, dude, you're saying it really was her? Yes, she's the real killer. She was the one who murdered Juan Corita. But why? I thought she was buds with Juan. She has her own agenda. <laughs> her own agenda? What are you talking about? I'm sure you're gonna see by the time this trial's over. It'll be all right, I'm gonna get you acquitted by the end of today. Get me a verdict that's refreshing like a spring breeze, okay, Mr. Lawyer dude? Phoenix, you think her motive is related to, to Celeste Impact's missing suicide note, right? Yes. Miss Andrews depended on Miss Impact's for her strength and will to live. But then Miss Impact suddenly killed herself. It sounds like she left a suicide note, and the person thought to have hidden it is Juan Carita, the victim of the murderer. And that's why I think that Miss Andrews got close to Mr. Carita. All to get the suicide note back. It sounds plausible. But one thing bothers me. Um, what? Who was it that first told us about their relationship? Better stated, Miss Andrews' codependency with regards to Miss Impact's. Edgeworth. It looks like he's still the one in command of this ship. Don't let your guard down yet. March 22nd, 225, District Court, room number three. Court will now reconvene. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you please. The prosecution calls the witness subpoenaed by this court. Miss Adrian Andrews, the person who discovered the crime in Mr. Juan Carita's room. Now, what is your occupation? She has the same seashell card that Maya found as well. I am the manager of the defendant in the case, Mr. Matt Ungard. I see. Now then. Before we begin, Your Honor, I have one request. Um, sure. What is it? I'm sure everyone in this room is wondering the same thing, and would love to find out more about my relationship with the victim. After all, it was the topic of a certain weekly magazine recently. I have no idea what you mean. I've never even heard of Gossip Land. If the judge was ever a prosecution witness, he'd do all my work for me. Anyways, I was wondering if you could please tell us about your relation to the victim. Yes, I was seeing Mr. Carita. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between Matt and Juan, but this was a private matter between Juan and myself. So it was a fry and bait matter. Or was it the bait and fry? Reminds me of fishing. But I didn't kill him. No one has accused you of that. I've got a feeling someone will soon. I think we all understand your relationship with the victim now, Miss Andrews. Very well, witness. Please testify to the court about what happened when you discovered the murder that had taken place. When I found the body. It was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. After that, I went to get- I went to Juan's room and there was his dead body. I- I was in shock. What I saw was- Excuse me. What I saw was naturally the exact same scene as in this crime scene photo. As... As I felt, though, I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. That juice is gonna be the real kicker here. You poured yourself a glass of juice? Yes, sadly, I don't remember not to touch things at the scene of the crime. And I disturbed the crime scene by moving this one thing. And that's... that is when the fingerprints of the wine glass were made, Your Honor. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Phoenix. She's one cool and collected customer, and she has the brains to match. I... In order to catch a person like her, you have to avoid head-on confrontations. You should disrupt her pace. Disrupt her pace? 
She's the type of woman who is easily thrown off by things inconsistent with her thinking, so you have to attack when she least expects it. The instant you let up on your offense is the instant the trial is over, understand? I think so. It was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. After that, I went to Juan's room. And then, well, there was his dead body. I was in shock. What I saw was naturally the exact same scene as the crime scene photo. Let's press here. This is the photo you're referring to, correct? Yes, the one with the knife lodged in the chest. And the guitar case was like this too? Yes, it was open and empty, of course. And then, what did you do next, witness? I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. Juice? Yes, there was a bottle of tomato juice on the table, so I helped myself. But you didn't drink any of it, did you? Huh? There were no lip marks left on the wine glass to suggest that anyone drank from it. I... I wasn't feeling terribly great, so I set the glass down, without drinking. Doesn't sound like there's any glaring contradictions in her testimony just now. I warned you earlier that she would not crack so easy. The only way to make her is to keep on the offensive and not let up. The only way you're going to catch her is with some very strong, decisive evidence. I have to find something. I just have to, for Maya's sake. Alright, I'm gonna repress on the first couple statements. It was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. And what were Mr. Ungar- what was Mr. Ungar doing at the time? He was taking a nap. He was worn out from his mini-performance as the Nickel Samurai during the ceremony. Mr. Ungar did say he was taking a nap. Then I guess you could say it could not have been taken out of his room. Yes? Excuse me? It? What are you... Right. I thought years of school would have taught you how to construct a sentence. You can't make a sensible subject sentence with a subject, then I'll make one for you. Watch. Did you, Miss Andrews, remove Mr. Ungard's knife from his room? No. Subject, verb, object, right? Did you skip basic grammar? The witness may continue. Sassy. After that, I went to Juan's room. And why did you do that? As a friendly gesture. Juan was to make an appearance with the other heroes. The show... So the show was supposed to be a show of friendship, huh? Let's press further here. Is that the only reason? I beg your pardon? What are you implying? You had a certain goal in mind when you started to get close to him, correct? So perhaps you had a more personal matter to discuss with the victim. Sorry, but I didn't have any such intentions in mind at the time. Can't get her to talk without a strong piece of evidence, I guess. May we continue now? Witness, what did you see when you got into his room? There was his dead body. I was in shock. I haven't pressed this statement yet. You were in shock. What? Was I not supposed to be? Miss Andrews is a very calculating person, and despite how close they were, I doubt she had romantic feelings for Mr. Corita. Anyone randomly stumbling upon a dead body would be in shock, and you can't seriously expect that a young beauty like her would not be shocked. Somehow, I don't think beauty had anything to do with being shocked or not. Hmm, I see. Miss Andrews, I would like to confirm with you one more thing. When you discovered the dead body of Juan Corita, you were in great shock. And that's when you poured yourself a glass of juice, correct? And what of it? My mind really was a complete blank at the time. Your mind was a complete blank? I didn't think that was possible for you. Aren't you rude today? I was so dazed that I made one careless mistake, that one thing. What one thing? Um, never mind, it's no big deal. What was she starting to say just now? Press further, we need more info. Miss Andrews, I'm convinced that, as you said, you made a mistake at the scene of the crime. What I really want to know is what this mistake was. Hmm, actually, so would I. I... Sorry, it's just... It's kind of embarrassing. When I... I set the glass down on the dresser, I accidentally knocked the flower vase over. We got our evidence! 
flower vase. Are you talking about the one on the floor in the crime photo? Now we have something to go with here. This mess of glass shards? It was originally on top of the dresser, but when I bumped into it with my elbow, it fell. To the guitar case. Why did you withhold such important pieces of information from me? I'm sorry. I thought that since the crime scene was already in disarray that people would simply assume the vase was just another part of the mess. It looks like yet another fact has come to light here. Please add this and anything else you reveal to your testimony. I'm sorry, but I have nothing more to add. I didn't touch anything else. Hmm. I was the one who knocked the flower vase over, where it fell onto the guitar case. Okay, I'm gonna press right now, but I I know I'll show you my guys I'll show you guys my line of thinking right now. If so let's take a look at the crime scene photo. Photo scene to the crime, guitar case open. But as we know from the guitar case, there was only water found on the lid, implying that if it was broken over, if if it was broken by the at the time she uh, discovered the body, she would have to be the one to have opened the guitar case. She was the one who opened the guitar case. That doesn't really prove anything for us at this point, but it proves that she hasn't been completely honest with us. What kind of flower vase was it? It was a glass vase, and it was fairly big and heavy. I thought I would try to take Juan's pulse, so I set the glass I was holding down on the dresser, and that's when my elbow accidentally hit the vase. That's odd, I thought she was always in total control of herself. That's what she would like people to think. Always be mindful of the gap between the perception and reality. It doesn't sound like there's any glaring contradictions in her testimony just now. I warned you earlier that she would not crack so easily. There's only one make way to make her do so. Okay, I'm gonna present the guitar case. I gotta present the guitar case. I think that's the only thing I can do. Either that or the scene of the crime. It's gotta be. I'm gonna present- I'm gonna present the guitar case. OBJECTION! Objection! You testified that you knocked the flower vase over. Is this correct? Yes. And you're sure it fell onto the guitar case? Some problem with what I said? It's not some problem, it's a major problem. It's true that the top of the guitar case was wet with water, however, that is exactly what is so strange. Miss Andrews, you testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case, however, if that were true, then the case should have gotten wet on the inside and not the outside. That's... that's very true! Furthermore, there is one other strange thing about the guitar case. And... and what is that? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. The remains of the vase are scattered on the floor, and what is wrong... And what is wrong with that? If the guitar case was open when the vase fell, the glass shard should be inside, not outside the case. <gasps> what is your point, right? The case was closed at the time the vase was knocked over. Is that all? No. Think back to what Miss Andrews testified to. She said that other than the vase, she didn't touch anything else. <sighs> yes, that's right. She did implicitly say she didn't touch the guitar case. But... This whole matter with the guitar case is a dead end. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. It had no bearing on the case at all. That may very well be. However, an empty guitar case does seem to have no relation to this case. Hmm. It seems there's no deeper meaning to the guitar case. Well, Mr. Wright, do you think we need to hear more details about the, about the guitar case? Yeah, I do. The empty guitar case. I believe this is a crucial piece of the puzzle. I can't believe anyone would reach for straws like this. But it is you. Can't believe I'm doing this either. Oh, all right. I'll follow along for now. Miss Andrews, please testify to the court about the guitar case. Yes, Your Honor. I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. It's not a big deal though, right? The case was empty after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. 
Hmm. It looks like this really wasn't a very important point. This wastefulness is such a familiar feeling by now that it's almost comforting. Um, anyway, I'll just go ahead and start the cross-examination. Hmm. Using any way to change the topic. A convenient escape for a weak man. I don't remember too clearly because, well, I was a bit dazed. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. So you opened the guitar case then? Yes. Well, maybe. Why did you open the guitar case? Huh? Mr. Corita's dead body was right there in front of you, wasn't it? I would think that the first thing you would do is call for help, not open a guitar case. As the witness has said multiple times when she found the dead body, she was dazed. Maybe I... Yeah, I was curious to know if the bright red guitar was alright or not. I thought maybe the criminal took it. Why would she... Why would she care about a bright red guitar? But getting back on topic... It's not a big deal though, right? The case was empty after all. Was it really empty? I was just wondering if maybe when you opened the case, the guitar was still inside. Something else could have been in the case, Phoenix. How long have you been a lawyer, Mr. Wright? Have a little professionalism. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. These trials will be over in half the time if you would just pay attention. Yes, pay more attention, Mr. Wright. Sorry. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. Was that because you were shocked and dazed at discovering the victim's body? Yes, that's probably it. I'm not going to get anywhere if I continue pressing her like this. The only way to make her talk is with evidence. Guess I should give it a try. Come on, Phoenix, we can't afford to let up on her now. I wasn't planning on it. She's at her weakest now, so this is our chance. We had, to, we had a weapon to hit her with. I'm sure a weapon is hiding somewhere in the court record waiting to be found. I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. I want to press on this one as well real quick. During your testimony just now, did you remember those events clearly in your mind? Well, you see, are you sure you're the one who opened the guitar case? She's she's waiting for someone to tell her if she should answer or not. Codependency is coming through, huh? Well, Miss Andrews? Yes, it was me. Okay. Let's take a look at some stuff in the court record. The guitar case. Her opening the guitar case after finding his dead body. Why would she do it? Seems like the Nickel Samurai is to confess something after the post-ceremony stage show with the press conference ticket. The radio transceiver, not relevant, I think. The camera, I don't think it's relevant. The magazine clipping. Superstar in an ultra-hot mega-secret love scandal. Reliable sources say that Juan Carita has been getting... In close with the mysterious yet beautiful manager of the stars, A.A. A. Hotel guide map, not helpful, I don't think. The guitar case, empty. There's some water on top of it, or on top of the lib. There's some water, but only on top of it bears Corita's fingerprints. Found next to the victim, it's filled with tomato juice. It bears Andrew's fingerprints. Photo of Juan Carita's murder, murder scene. All right, let's take a look. Hmm. Where's Andrew's fingerprints on the guitar case? I guess there aren't any, but Oh, I guess that would mean she's lying about knocking over the vase after discovering the murder. It's ripped from his costume, it's covered in his blood, found in on guard Takama. The suicide report of her mentor, and her attempted suicide report, and Juan's autopsy report. And Lada's photo.
I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. Not a big deal though, right? The case was empty after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. Yeah, if she opened it, it should have her prints on it, but the only prints discovered on it are Mr. Karita's prints. So if she opened the guitar case, then this is conflicting evidence, is it not? I think so. Not a big deal though, the case was empty. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. I think this is what we're gonna do. She can't have opened the guitar case without gloves on because her prints aren't on it, and yet her prints are on the wine glass at the crime scene. OBJECTION! OBJECTION! There's no way you were the one who opened that guitar case. Why would you say that? It's elementary, my dear. Because the only fingerprints on this guitar case are those of the victim. <gasps> what is it, Mr. Miss Andrews? You shouldn't assume that I must have left prints just because I touched the case. What do you mean? What if I were to tell you that I was wearing gloves at the time? Gloves? Why would you be wearing gloves at the time? It was the night of the award ceremony, so of course I dressed up for the occasion. Yes, now I remember. I'm almost sure I was wearing a pair of thin gloves. Hmm, see. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems the witness was wearing gloves at the scene of the crime. That's strange, Your Honor. You were wearing gloves? Isn't that a little strange? Why is that strange? Do you have something that would prove I was not wearing gloves at the time? Uh, yeah, this wine glass with your fingerprints that you used as evidence. I have your proof right here, this wine glass. The wine glass? You left your fingerprints very clearly on this wine glass. <gasps> Even if you took your gloves off when you poured yourself this glass of juice, you wouldn't think it was just a little strange. That you put your gloves back on just to open the guitar case? <gasps> Her glasses broke! She put on a new pair, what? That's wild. Order, order, order. It's like you hit the nail on the head this time, Phoenix. What do you mean? I believe that guitar case plays a very important role here, but it's just an empty case. I wonder if it really was empty though. But the guitar, it was at the studio. Phoenix, drop all of your presumptions. What was in the guitar case was not the bright red guitar. You don't mean it was a bright white guitar? Wait, that's not it either. Hmm, I admit it would be unnatural for someone to do that. So the witness was not wearing gloves despite the fact that on the case. Your honor, this is obviously the defense's usual misdirection tactic at work. Steer the court towards an unrelated topic and lull us all into his misguided no, Your Honor. Please recall that Miss Andrews had testified that the vase had fallen onto the guitar case, which means that the case was closed when the crime took place. However, it is wide open in this photograph of the crime scene. I am sure this guitar case has some relation to the murder. If you are so sure, right, then I'm sure you can somehow substantiate your outrageous claim, correct? Please, enlighten us as to why the guitar case has anything to do with this murder. Uh... Can you do that, Mr. Wright? Well, let's suppose for a second that the bright red guitar was not the only thing that could have been in the case. The bright red guitar not being the only thing? You don't mean to suggest that a bright black guitar was the one in the case? So you intend to push your theory that the case was not empty? Is that it, Wright? I wouldn't say something I didn't intend to prove, Miles. Deflate that head of yours, you haven't proven anything yet. Now then, let's have it. What was inside the case at the time of the murder? Well, shit. How am I supposed to know that? What was inside the case at the time of the murder? We don't know. All right, idea, idea. What if for some reason, this is kind of silly, but what if the, what if the wine glass with uh, Andrew's fingerprints was inside the case and thus her having the gloves was true. 
Her having the gloves was true. So that's why. Uh, no, nah, it's stupid. This is stupid. Was her suicide note hidden? Yeah, I guess looking for the suicide note is the biggest thing. I have to put this in at some point or another, so... Let's just l run through our evidence. Make sure I'm not, like, barking up the wrong tree in any way, shape, or form here. Costume was in the case? Eh. I don't have costume as evidence, I think. Well, I mean, I have this. The Nickel Samurai's outfit, or the picture. The press conference ticket. Not important. Radio transceiver, doubtful. Lotta's camera, no. Magazine clipping, um, I don't think so. Hotel guide map, not relevant. The guitar case wasn't inside the guitar case. The wine glass is still relevant in some way, shape, or form, but I don't... I don't think... I don't think it's useful right now. The crime photo was not inside the case. Jammin' Ninja's button isn't it the suicide note from celeste impacts's suicide could be the reason she looked through the case that would make sense to a degree attempted suicide report that's not it uh juan's autopsy strangled with a scarf then stabbed with a knife the knife bears the victim's fingerprints and blood and lotta's photo with Clearly her being uh, in this costume, I think. And which which covers the whole glove thing, too, considering that there's gloves on the costume. Now let's have it. What was inside the case at the time? I'm trying the suicide report, I think. And why would something like that be inside a guitar case, let alone this one? Why, Mr. Wright? Why? Well, I just thought it might have been possible. Shit. I have a suggestion. Why don't you put that in the void where your brain is supposed to be? And never bring it back out again. And a foolishly foolish fool gets some love? You still think you can prove your theory? Can you prove that the guitar case was not empty at the time of the world? Okay, so it doesn't have to do with the suicide note. Alright, fine. I'll trust you. I'll present the Nickel Samurai. I'll present the Nickel Samurai. Oh god, it worked. This is... This... Yes. But what is important is what's in the picture, your honor. In this picture? It doesn't take a genius to see what I mean. What I'm proposing is... Inside the guitar case was the Nickel Samurai. The hero's very own costume. Nani? M Mr. Wright, explain yourself. Right, are you saying the witness opened the guitar case to take out a costume? What insane point would there be to doing something like that? That insane point would be to wear the costume, of course. Miss Andrews put it on to hide her identity so she could make her escape. After all, you couldn't let anyone see you leave, could you, Miss Andrews? I refuse to accept your theory. Do you have anything to support such a preposterous idea? Just outside the door was an investigative photographer who was starving for a big scoop. And in the end, she managed to get this shot correct. You... you mean this photo? Order! Order! It looks like we've wandered into another mess, haven't we? Nice job, Phoenix. Well, you know my strategy. Speak first, think later. So the real murderer was hiding inside a costume. Wait one second, Your Honor. The Nickel Samurai's costume would have been Mr. Matt on guards. Why would something of the defendants be in the victim's room and inside the guitar case of all places? Hmm, true. That is a little baffling. See, I was baffled by it too, guys. Mr. Wright, the court would like to hear your thoughts. What was the Nickel Samurai costume doing inside the guitar case? Uh...
Spare costume seems to make some sense, but why was it in his guitar case? Stakes we could have been trapped up. Like, yeah, I guess it was pretty. It was stolen from Ungarder. It was a spare costume. I don't, I don't know, man. Look at those cheekbones putting in work on voice act. I know, right? Here's, here's, okay. So here's the real, here's the real confusion, man. It was stolen from Ungard would make some sense because they were rivals but it was a spare costume the only reason a spare costume would be in his guitar case unless unless she went to unguard's room with the guitar case and came back with it again into his room right She took the guitar out and put the costume. No, the guitar was at the studios, and it was never, it was never at the, it's the weird, the fact that there was no guitar in there, I'll, I'll go with spare, I'll go with spare. Mr. Ungard did not take his costume off during the break period. In that case, the costume we're talking about was a spare one. What? Ben, are you saying that on the night of the murder, there was two Nickel Samurai costumes at the Gatewater Hotel? Yes, that is what I am saying. And just how do you explain the costume that was inside the guitar case? It would mean that the victim himself had planned to bring this spare to the ceremony. But... But why? The victim, Mr. Corita, was the jammin' ninja. Why would he secretly bring the Nickel Samurai spare costume with him? What could be the reason behind such a peculiar act? Um... So that's what he intended. What are you mumbling to yourself about now? Have you just been rambling about all this time without any inner sense of monologue? Huh? N no, I just- Mr. Wright, please explain yourself. Why do you think the victim had the Nickel Samurai spare costume? Phoenix, are you sure you can explain this one? Think carefully before you answer, and then answer with gusto. I believe in you. All right, this is what I think. The reason the victim brought the Nickel Samurai spare costume to the hotel was This is one reason. Okay, so remember that Mr. Matt Ungard never had any idea that he was to be doing a press conference after the ceremony. The only reason it would make one reason it would make sense for Juan Carita would be to pose as the Nickel Samurai for the press conference and do whatever this confession is so there's one potential reason right there um that might be a bit of a stretch though the reason the victim brought the nickel samurai spare costume to the hotel maybe this reliable sources say that Juan Karita has been getting close with the mysterious yet beautiful manager maybe he was gonna dress up as the nickel samurai Maybe he was going to dress up as the Nickel Samurai and and just remove suspicion. Nah, he wouldn't care about that. The guitar case isn't it. The wine isn't it. The crime photo isn't it. The button isn't it. It's got to be this. It's got to be this. The, it's got to be the press conference ticket. I think it's the press conference ticket because that makes sense. If he had a spare costume and the manager planned the whole thing but uh, on guard never knew about a conference, then the two of them were in cahoots to potentially do this extra, this this second like press conference outside of Mr. Unguard's knowledge. Let's go for it. What is, what is this? On the night of the murder, after the stage show, the Nickel Samurai was going to hold a special press conference. A press conference? Yep, the Nickel Samurai was supposed to confess something at the conference. I heard about this as well. For once, you're not making something up, right? But what struck me as strange was that Mr. Ungard himself said he had no idea he was supposed to be holding a press conference that night. But how can that be? The way I see it, that can only mean one thing. The conference was set up by none other than the victim. 
Mr. Juan Corita himself. The victim? Yes. The Spare Nickel Samurai costume was prepared for that very conference. Mr. Corita was going to hold the press conference as the Nickel Samurai. He was going to dress up as the Nickel Samurai and hold a conference? But why would the victim do such a thing? That's something I don't quite know yet. However, what I am concerned with right now is what he intended to reveal at the conference. Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. And by confess, I'd wager he was going to reveal something about himself. Which means that Juan Carita, posing as the Nickel Samurai, was going to speak about Matt on guard. Yes, I guess that is what it would mean. But if that's the case, that's not a confession. That's public disclosure. Hmm. Miss Andrews? I can see why you're all pros at what you do. Pardon me? Yes, just as you say, the press conference was set up by Juan. Oh, she's telling us all about it. Miss Andrews, please offer us an explanation for this. I was the one he asked to help set it up. And the person who prepared the second costume for him was also me. You! Juan had to bet everything on the Jammin' Ninja this year. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. He was going to ruin him, huh? It looked like somehow Juan had held his hands in a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career if it had ever been revealed. What? Nani? And do you know what the secret of Mr. Ungard is, Miss Andrew? That's something only Juan knew. I don't know what it is. I see. I don't know if I believe her. I've probably been coming off quite suspicious to everyone, but that is to be expected. I've been trying to protect Matt, after all. P protect Mr. On Guard? And yet again, another strange bit of truth comes to light, it seems. Miss Andrews, if you could, please tell us the truth about your behavior. Yes, Your Honor. I understand. Protecting Matt. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Matt had to kill Moan, no matter what. He didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course. The button and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt that I had to protect him. What the hell? Hmm, this does account for everything. Well, I am the logical type. Finally seeing her true self. She's more nervous than a scared rabbit. There are no objections. I feel I can pass a verdict based on this testimony. Now then, Mr. Wright, if you please. It's like somehow everything swung the opposite end of the scale again. That just means I have to put my weight into this and turn her logic upside down. Protecting Matt. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. Why is that? Would you say that your intuition was speaking to you? Don't confuse my methods of reasoning with your own. Ugh. If you want to prove that someone did something, you need three things. Three things? A motive, an opportunity to commit the crime, and finally, decisive evidence. And if you think these three things through, the answer becomes quite clear. You should have already known that, Phoenix. They didn't teach that to us in school. At least not from what I remember. May I continue now? Matt had to kill Juan no matter what. Why? So, would you say this need came from the press conference? Yes. Do you know why Juan chose that event and that hotel for the conference? Because that's when he could cause the most damage to the public's beloved Matt and Guard. And you knew of this plan, didn't you, Miss Andrews? Yes, because I was the one who set up the conference and prepared the costume. But I'm sure Mr. On Guard himself didn't know anything about a press conference. Oh, really? Can you show me any proof that he didn't know about the press conference? Anyway, the important thing is that this information was not in your testimony. Yes, I agree, Miss Andrews. Please correct your testimony if you please. Grasping at straws now, are we, Mr. Wright? Okay, that's good. Has Mr. On Guard done something to hurt or betray you personally? Why do you ask? 
You were the one who helped Mr. Karita with his press conference, and that event was supposed to bring down Mr. On Guard, yet you still helped out! The person on trial right now is Mr. On Guard, right? What the witness was thinking, helping the victim with his plan, is none of our concern. In any case, that means the defendant had motive to had a motive to kill. Why do I keep doing this to myself? And he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. He was sleeping. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, of course, the button and the knife. But I'm Matt's manager, so I felt the need to protect him. I know what his mode. This is the new statement we unlocked, so. I don't know, we gotta keep pressing. My thoughts were confirmed by the evidence, and of course, the button in the knife. You can hardly call the knife decisive evidence. The fingerprints on the knife could very well be a clever camouflage. Then, what about the button? The button? It's clear from the crime scene that the victim and the murderer fought. And during the fight, the killer ripped the button from the Jam and Ninja's costume. You're talking about this button, correct? That button was found in the pleats of Matt's Hakama. Isn't that correct? I would think that makes it very decisive evidence. Uh. Looks like you were out foxed again, Mr. Wright. Anyway, the knife doesn't prove a thing. Please fix your testimony. I can't stand the sight of a man who can't gracefully accept his defeat. Goodness, Mia can still look at me. With an icy stare, yeah. Miss Andrews, for Mr. Wright's sake, please add this information to your testimony. That button was torn off Juan during his fight with Matt. Okay, I'm gonna press on on the final statement. But what you really did was stab the guy in the back, didn't you? And at the worst possible time. Who's to say she's really stabbed the guy in the back, as you put it? This witness could have disclosed things about Mr. On Guard at any time. Why then would she wait until there was a large audience before doing so? It's the same reason Mr. Karita planned such an elaborate conference. Miss Andrews wanted to cause as cause Mr. On Guard as much damage as she possibly could. The witness bears ill will towards the defendant. This isn't the Phoenix Wright wax philo philosophical power hour. And please stop slandering the witness. As I expected, Miss Andrews' testimony seems pretty solid. Really, because to me it sounded a little wishy-washy. Wishy-washy? Well, I guess we'll see if I press a little more. You should know this by now, Phoenix, but you'll need a strong, decisive evidence to make her talk. Got it, Chief. I'm gonna pin you down this time, man. From the moment I saw the crime scene, I had a feeling that Matt was the murderer. I know his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove that I'm right. Let's try pressing this statement. Has Mr. On Guard done something to her to betray you personally? Why do you ask? You were the one who helped Mr. Karita. Okay, so it's giving me the same thing as the revised testimony thing. And he didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. That button was torn off Juan during his fight with Matt. And how do you know that? When the ends of the threads on the button... When the ends of the threads on the button and the costume were matched up, they were found to fit together perfectly. Or so I heard. Hmm. I've heard that before too, but why would Miss Andrews know about this case down to such a fine detail? Don't look at me like that. Just because I'm prepared and you are not. And I thought I had her this time for sure. If there's anything to trip her up on, it has to be here, but where and what? Okay, so let's take a look at our evidence regarding this fight. The button was torn off during his fight with Matt. Investigate the button. Ripped off from his costume, covered in Karita's blood, found in Unguard's Akama. The stabbing happened right at the button. Um. I don't know, man. I don't know. I've got no hint, man. Hey, 
Pyolos Feline, what's going on? The only thing that's still really suspicious is this wine glass, man. He didn't have an alibi for what he was doing at the time of the murder. I don't know what his motive was, but I don't have any way to prove I'm right. The button was torn off Juan during his fight with Matt. Let's investigate some profiles. Hmm. This seems like... Uh... Picture taken in the hallway right after the murder. I guess this is... The button was torn... Uh, I don't know, man. Wait a second. Wait a second. Okay. I think what's important here is maybe this detail. The fact that the cause of death strangled with a scarf and then stabbed with a knife. If he were strangled with a scarf first, why would the button be ripped off? If this is... Because the stab wound is directly in the button. Like, right at the button. You can see it right there on the, on the image. So if... It looks almost as if the stab wound was designed to pull off the button. I don't know. I feel like we're reaching a little bit here, but... Strangle the scarf first is the only detail we haven't really addressed. I don't know, man. I don't know. Strangled from behind, no. I don't have details on where, but I gotta assume so. Strangled with a scarf, too. So, the ninja wears a scarf, so it would only require pulling on the scarf for that. For that. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Honestly, let's just try it. OBJECTION! This is the victim's autopsy report. It clearly states that the cause of death was strangulation by a scarf. Strangulation? The knife stab to the victim was done after the victim had already died. And what does this mean? Let's examine the evidence. This button has the victim's blood on it, which would mean that it was ripped off the costume when... After it was stabbed into the victim. Exactly! Which means... It is impossible that this button was torn off during the victim's final struggle. Because the victim was strangled to death in that fight! <gasps> That's right, Miss Andrews. There's no way this button was ripped off during the struggle. This button was consciously pulled off the victim's already dead body. Order! Order! What is the meaning of- What is the meaning of this, right? So what if the button was torn off the body after the victim had already died? What does that change? Let me ask you one simple question, Mr. Edgeworth. Why was the button torn off? What purpose did that serve? What purpose? We know now that this button was not torn off during the fight, so the murderer took the time and effort to purposefully rip this from the victim's body. That would mean that the murderer had something in mind, wouldn't it? Mr. Wright, does this mean... Does this mean you know the murderer, what the murderer wanted to do with the button? What is it? To pin the crime on, on, on guard! There's only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. Unguard. There is no way anyone would have put a bloodied button in their own pants. That's right, Mr. Unguard was set up by the real killer, of course! And the real murderer is... Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world would the real killer be then? Finally. I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix, you can't let your guard down yet. Not until the very end. The real killer, the person who planned to frame Mr. Unguard, 
my first instinct has to be Adrian Andrews. It has to be Adrian Andrews, guys. It has to be Adrian Andrews. There's no way. There's no way. It was anyone else. She was she was in the room. She's very clearly stated to have gone into the room. Old Bag was on watch and would have seen anyone else, right? It couldn't have been her. She's dead. Couldn't have been him. He's innocent, says me. Couldn't have been him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute! It could have been him! It could have been suicide! Think about it! Think about it! Think about it! She... So, it was mentioned that if... I forget where it was mentioned, but someone said that Juan Corita, if he, uh, if he was found... If he didn't win this costume, it would be like breaking for him, right? They said it would be, it would be, it would, it would be the, the, the it would be big news. It'd be big news. It'd be big news. I don't know, man. Is it him? Is it him? Is it him? I don't know. Should I try it? Should I try it? Think about it. If he killed himself and then she walked into the room. Then, she could have stabbed with a knife from, uh, other dude's room after he was already strangulated, right? And then she could easily pin his already suicide. No, but then, hold on. The costume was already in his suitcase. The marks from strangulation are look different than hanging. You know, that's a good point. It would... It would probably... It would probably... I'm pretty sure you can't strangle yourself. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be able to just strangle yourself until death, because you would pass out beforehand. No. It was an interesting theory, but I think it doesn't work. I think it doesn't work. This man would have had to have physically choked himself out until death. And he wouldn't have stabbed himself after. Adrian Andrews would have stabbed himself. The person who planned to frame Mr. On Guard. Well, I guess the person who planned to frame On Guard would have to be Adrian Andrews. I'm just. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's. You know what? Let's go for broke. Let's try it. Right. Which one of these four doesn't belong here? Up, down, left, right. Um, right? Thank you. I feel much better. I'm relieved to know you can at least pick that much out. I worry about you. You seem to fail every time you try to make logical sense. Or in other words, think before you speak, Phoenix. It was a stretch. But if that happened, that would have been the most clutch thing ever. That would have been the sickest twist ever. All right, it's, it's, it's her, it's her. We'll regain our health during the other session. Don't worry. Adrian Andrews, it's her. Yeah, here it is. Miss Adrian Andrews, I choose you! You're Mr. Karita's killer! What? What? Order! 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 Mr. Wright, this is a very grave matter! Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points to Miss Andrews! What? How preposterous! You can't stick any of that on me! I can't, can I? Would you care to test me? Then what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Mr. On Guard naturally. A knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife to take was you. <sighs> then, then, wh what about the button that was found in Matt's Hakama? This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only people who could have done so were the person who found his body or the killer. However, if Mr. On Guard was the real killer, there is no way he would have put such incriminating evidence in his own Hakama. Uh! 
The only person who could have put this button into Mr. Ungard's Hakama is the person who went to wake him up from his nap, which is you! Yet again, Miss Andrews! I see. What about the empty guitar case? That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. That costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the scene of the crime. Now, who could have known that there was just such a costume inside the guitar case? It could only have been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. And that person is you, Miss Adrian Andrews. No, I... But Miss Andrews' fingerprints were not anywhere to be found on the guitar case, and it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. <gasps> that's... that's right. That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found that she had touched the case, then they would have asked her why. So to avoid leaving any prints, she used a towel or something else to open it. But the glass of tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposefully left her fingerprints on that glass to show that, indeed, she was the classic dazed discoverer of a dead body. <gasps> and to top it all off, there's this photo. A photo of the killer as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on earth can believe this nickel samurai as Mr. On Guard. He would be much too short for his own costume if it was him. Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews, you're also kind of short in stature, are you not? <laughs> Please. Stop. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? Um, I've got her this time. <sighs> Miss Andrews? I... I refuse to testify. What? What was that? There's a law. It says I can't be forced to testify about something if it can incriminate me. Well, yes. You are absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self-incrimination. By allowing a witness to not testify if the testimony can cause damage to themselves. Nanny? Pleading the fifth is not something most people would think to do on the spot. Actually, thinking back to yesterday in Mr. Ungard's room... Adrian Andrews! Yes? Think hard about what... about what we just discussed. Understood? Uh, alright. That's it. That's when Franziska planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Andrews not to testify if things looked bad. You did a good job proving everything up until this point, Mr. Er, Phoenix, right? But there's still one thing you haven't done. Something I haven't done. <laughs> What's wrong, right? You finished already. Run out of evidence. What's so humorous, Mr. Edgeworth? Well, I'm sure you realize this as well, Your Honor, but everything the good lawyer here has proven up to this point is meaningless. No, it's not! Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Circumstantial? Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to provide a single piece of definitive proof. Proof that Miss Andrews did, in fact, harbor a wish to murder Mr. Corita. Oh, this is where I present the suicide note. Miss Andrews, you... Did you want to kill Mr. Corita? I believe this may lead to me incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There is nothing to prove it either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I would be guilty of due to my silence. Oh, she's taking that defiant attitude again. Mia, what should we do? Somehow we've landed in the worst possible situation, Phoenix. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this point in time. Miss Adrian Andrews has refused to testify, and the defense's theory that she is the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid, solid definitive proof. But that's not true! In this situation, there is only one thing the court can do, and that is to declare a recess. Recess? I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter and at tomorrow's trial. T tomorrow We don't have a tomorrow. If we don't get a not guilty verdict today... Please wait, Your Honor. Th that's not necessary. The trial. Please continue with the trial. 
What are you sweating for? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That's... That's not it. This isn't about that. Edgeworth, I know you know who the real killer is. Please. Let the trial continue if I don't get the verdict. And Maya... Oh, we've sparked Edgy Poo's interest. But it's impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. Testify. Now, then, this court is... Edgeworth, it is not impossible for this trial to continue. Mr. Edgeworth? What are you... It's true Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination. However, if the topic of conversation were something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, then she has no right to withhold testimony. Yes, that is very true, but... Actually, there is one little thing I'm curious about. Miss Andrews... When you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a glass of juice. Yes? And? I can't help but think how nat unnatural that is. Usually, when fi one finds a dead body, they're shaken up. Not stirring a glass of juice. So my actions were unusual, but I've already... Before you speak, I want you to state that if you had a... I want you to state that if you have a reason behind your actions. I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify? Your Honor. I would like to request the witness testify again as to what happened when she first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we find out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. Hmm. I don't know what it is about Edgeworth today, but I can't get a good read off him. Is he friend or foe? I just don't know. The court acknowledges the prosecution's request. Miss Andrews, if you please. Found the body. All right. That glass of juice. I didn't really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked in the room and saw it in that messy state. And Juan, who was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, I thought that he was... The thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something. So I went to pour him some juice. That's when I realized that he was dead. That's when I knocked the flower vase over. But then why did none of the juice spill if it had already been poured? So you poured that glass of juice for the victim. Why didn't you say so in earlier testimony? Didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Phoenix, please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. Oh. What the heck is going on in that brain of yours, Edgeworth? Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. When I found the body. That glass of juice, I didn't really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and I saw it in that messy state. Yo, Legend Duo Keeper with the host. Welcome on in, man. Thanks for the host. How are you doing? My dude, really appreciate it, man. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in that messy state. And Juan, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. Did he already have a knife in his chest? Slumped over? Yes. He was sitting there with his head tilted forward, eyes closed. He really looked like he was sleeping. Is it just me or did that right... Or did that right there sound a little odd? When I saw him sitting like that, the thought hadn't... The thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. Then what did cross your mind? I thought maybe he had smashed everything up in anger because he lost the Grand Prix and felt tired after his rampage so decided to take a nap. Anyways, that's what I thought. I see. So you didn't think he was dead at all? To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. You thought he fainted? I thought he was asleep at first, but then the room was in such a messy state, I thought maybe he had gotten into a fight with someone. And that's when you poured the glass of juice? Yes. He always had a hard time waking up, so Juan always has a glass of tomato juice to drink. Hmm, I see. And after that, what happened next? When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the flower vase over. And how did you come to realize that he was, in fact, dead? 
I shook him over and over, but I never got a response. So I set the glass down on the dresser and tried to take his pulse. I, I was shocked, and I staggered backwards and knocked the flower vase over. So that's what happened. Yes. This is what it all comes down to. Huh? This is the absolute end for both sides, and Adrian is letting her guard down. Phoenix, now is our best chance to yet kill the prosecution's case. Isn't that a bit harsh? Miss Andrews, will you tell us the truth this time? My, my idea here, crime scene photo, that's when she knocked over the flower vase, but not the glass of wine? I don't think so, lady. I don't think so. So you honestly didn't think he was dead when you found him? No, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body. Ah! What? What is the meaning of this? Isn't it obvious, your honor? There's a knife sticking straight out of Mr. Karita's chest. Anyone who saw the scene would have immediately thought that he was a dead man. Um, uh, well, you see? I doubt a single person in the world would have mistaken this for someone who fainted, and then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink. Your point is? Miss Andrews, your testimony just now, it was all one giant lie. Ah! And your lie has proven one thing very clearly, that you are the real killer! No! It looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. The defendant, Mr. Matt Ungard, is not guilty after all. That... But that's impossible! You're wrong! Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. It... It wasn't me! It wasn't me, I tell you! It was Matt! I swear it! He's the one who killed Juan! But you were the one who refused to testify, and your reason for not doing so is that you might end up incriminating yourself. That's because... Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? I... I... I refuse to testify! And there is no need for this court to continue any further. Mr. Matt Ungard's innocence has been clearly demonstrated. Is... is it over? Have we... have we found the truth at last? What's wrong, Phoenix? Usually... Well, usually the real Keller confess, confesses his or her guilt. And now that I think about it, this is the first time uh, someone hasn't. Now then, I would like to hand down my verdict for Mr. Matt Ungard. Your Honor, the prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. What? The reason is quite simple. The witness has yet to, yet to speak about the real truth. The absolute real truth. What are you? Witness, don't you understand yet? Huh? I don't know who planted this silly idea in your hand, but as long as you protect yourself through silence, Matt on guard will go free. And in his place, you will become the guilty party. <sighs> that's... that's a lie! I, I don't believe you! What? I was told if I spoke, if I spoke, then it would be all over and Matt would never be declared guilty. What in the world is she talking about? Has she lost it? I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Franziska von Karma. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrews lives by gripping tightly onto the words of another because she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. And right now, Miss Andrews is. Yesterday, she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss Von Karma. Don't say a word, no matter what happens. If you do, Matt Ungard will be unquitted. Miss Andrews undyingly believes in those words now and is clinging on to them. Then what should we do? This is the first time I've ever come across anything like this. But Miss Andrews has to be the killer, right? All we have to do now is get our not guilty. That's my only priority. 
It wasn't me. I'm begging you. Please believe me. I didn't kill Juan. Help. Please, someone help me. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? The court can't continue on like this, and therefore I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What I intend to do? What, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Right, I suggest you think very carefully about this. Think about what the witness did and not what she did not do. And think about who the real mastermind behind this crime is. Who the real mastermind? Isn't that obvious? There's no one else it could be except the woman crying over there, right? I'm starting to think it's Franzeska. There's no one else it could be except the woman crying over there, right? Come now, what will you do? What kind of man are you, Phoenix, right? Request not- no, force Andrews to testify. We need more information. Listen, I want to save Maya, but I'm not about to incarcerate a potentially innocent woman. And the fact remains that while she is covering up whoever is the murderer, she herself, I don't think, is it. Think about it. Think about it. If she were being fought, or if, if she were being, uh, in, if she were, uh, sorry, if the criminal was her, she would in no way, shape, or form with her small stature right here. Well, it, it, it's brought, it's been brought up many times before, her small stature. She would in no way, shape, or form be able to win in a fight against an action hero star. There was no way that he wouldn't be able to just pull the scarf out a little bit and punch her in the head or something. So she, I don't think, is the killer. I don't think she has the strength to st strangle Juan Carita herself. I don't think she's the murderer. I do think she's being blackmailed, just like I am. Soon, bro. I'm sorry. I have to complete... I have to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. But... I can't bring myself to do it like this. Not when she's making a face like that. Miss Andrews, I would like to know what you are really hiding. Mr. Wright, are you sure you know what you are doing? Sure. Mr. Unguard would get an acquittal, but in his place, you would be found guilty. Is this... Is this really how you want the trial to end? Be quiet. How dare you? You're trying to trick me. That's enough. I commend you for trying, Mr. Edgeworth. However, it's clear that the defense's theory is true. You're wrong. Such a shame. I had hoped things wouldn't come to this. However... What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, it falls on my shoulders to disclose to this court. S Stop. Mr. Edgeworth? This witness. How should I put this? She has an illness. What? What? And because of this illness, she has tried to commit suicide in the past. Stop. Please stop. No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. You have the evidence, or I have the evidence right here. Ah, uh, that's, that's, that's the second part of the suicide report. The attempted suicide report. What will you do now, witness? You know what I am about to do, don't you? I will now reveal to the court the true nature of the pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrews. The secret of her codependent nature, having other people know about it, scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop, I beg you, if people find out, uh, if people find out, I'll... If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. Edgeworth, how can you be so cold? However, before you die, I will put... I will pull... I will pull the truth from your breathing lips, no matter what I have to do. She begged us not to present the evidence of her suicide. She begged us, literally begged us yesterday. That's strong for him to bring out right now. So, will you tell the court yourself or shall I? Either is fine with me. I... I'll talk. 
Please help me. Nothing matters. When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted. Honest. When I realized he was dead, well, that's when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room, and then I stabbed Juan's dead body with the knife and ripped off the button. And just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. And that's why, that's why I ended up using the nickel samurai costume. Stab the body with the knife? But why would you do that? Isn't it obvious to pin the blame on a certain person? A certain cowardly man? What do you mean by all of this? It might take this court as a, a little while to understand, but... This is the truth. The real killer is Matt, that scumbag of a man, and I'll never forgive him. He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time! Last time? So, Miss Andrews stabbed the victim, Juan Corita, in the chest with a knife. However, she didn't do it with murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing Matt on guard for the murder. And this, this is her crime! Nani? How is this possible? I mean, wasn't Miss Andrews supposed to be the real murderer? Mr. Wright, please get over your shock and commence the cross-examination. Okay, one thing really bit me for strange here. We need to mine a bit more information out of this part exact. When I first... When I first... This is the one, this is the one I'm worried about. Hold on. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash match to the mat's room, and then I stabbed one in the body with a knife and ripped out the button. Just when I finished and was, retur was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience, and that's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. I'm gonna just press everything, man. We need to get all the info we can. So when I first saw him, I really thought that he had fainted. Honest. But... You could tell from the statue the room was in. Or you could tell from the state the room was in that there must have been a fight. Are you telling the truth when you say that you did not know he was dead? He... He had a scarf tied around his neck, but that scarf is part of the Jammin Ninja's costume, so I didn't think anything about it was strange. His head was also tilted down a bit, so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I'd wake him up and went to pour the juice. When I realized he was dead, that's when I formulated my plan. What is this plan you had? I knew right away the murderer was Matt. I knew because Juan, he was going to expose Matt's weakest weak point to the world. So Matt did this to stop Juan and to silence him for good. And that's when I thought, I should forge some evidence and pin this crime on Matt. So the forged pieces of evidence were the knife and the button. The first thing that came to mind was to plant the knife. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. That was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at dinner had his fingerprints all over it. I thought that if I used that, then the police would certainly turn their eyes towards him. Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. I slipped in and took the knife and returned to the scene of the crime. Yeah, I feel like Old Bag would have seen her at any of these points, right? And then, I stabbed Juan's dead body with the knife and ripped the button off. So you were the one to stab the victim with the knife. It gives me goosebumps to think about it now. What a horrible thing I did. But at the time, I couldn't control my own body. It moved on its own. And then when I stabbed Juan's dead body, I suddenly realized something. If I used the button, somehow I could make Matt look even more suspect. So you thought to rip one of the buttons off and plant them in Mr. On Guard's Hakama. Yeah. Well, that's what I had planned to do, but... Things never go that smoothly, do they? Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I hit a bit of an inconvenience. An inconvenience? There was a woman with the camera at the ready, loitering in the hallway. Willing to bet my spikes it was Lada. 
There was also a woman with the ray gun at the ready, pacing back and forth. That's Miss Oldbag for ya. I had already been caught and made into a big scoop for a certain weekly tabloid once, so I couldn't very well go out look looking like myself and get caught again. And that's why... That's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. You were the one who prepared that costume, weren't you? Yes, I took it from Global Studios. I also put it into Juan's guitar case the day before the award ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes. Juan wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference in it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. And what is this secret? That, I don't know. Anyway, I thought if I was to leave Juan's room in the Nickel Samurai costume... Excuse me. ...then people would think that Matt was the real murderer. I was very careful not to leave any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. I think we've heard enough. So after that, you went back to Mr. Ungard's room and planted the button. Into Matt's Hakama? Yeah. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it into a bag, and then I snuck it out of the hotel and got rid of it. My word. What does all of this mean? Mr. Edgeworth, is it? The real criminal is Matt Ungard. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down for a talk. Francesca, huh? She said that I should, under no circumstances, confess to what I had done. That if I just kept quiet, then Matt would be found guilty for sure. I... I had no choice but to believe in her words. But there's no evidence against Matt anymore. What this witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we can be certain she is not the real killer. Wait, Your Honor. The defense still... Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it is not possible to indict Miss Andrews on anything. Except except for forging evidence. It's totally possible to indict her on that. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points to her as the murderer. The cross-examination of the witness is over, and so is today's trial. You couldn't establish that the witness wasn't the culprit. Please let it go, Mr. Wright. But... Mr. Edgeworth, please place Andrews under arrest for further questioning. Understood, Your Honor. The prosecution will arrange for her detention immediately. That is all. Court is adjourned for the day. Damn. That was a strong gavel bang. Dude, what's gonna happen to Maya? Day. Day's trial. It's over. I didn't win an acquittal. Witness, would you mind if I asked you something? Edgeworth? What is it? Before you leave court today, I wondered if I might look at one thing. That card in your... It's had my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? Oh, this? Mr. Wright also asked about this. Although I didn't remember the time you asked although I didn't remember the time you asked me, Mr. Wright. I remember just now. I found this in the room on that day. Room? That day? Yes. Oh come on! You found the card in there and you didn't think to say anything? Piece of shit. I found this card when I discovered Juan's body. It was lying there right next to him. You found that card. Next to the victim's body? I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pockets, but it's not as, th as if this card has any relevance to Juan's murder, right? Yeah, I guess not, but it's still a strange card if you ask me. But as far as a clue to this case, I don't see why. Witness! That card! Give it to me! Hurry! Edgeworth? Do you have any idea what you have stupidly get inadvertently done? This! I can't believe you hid this from me all this time! I... I didn't mean to. What is this all about? I've never seen such an emotional Edgeworth in my entire life. 
That card. What in the world is it? And what does it mean? Oh my god. We don't even get to add it as evidence. It's the strongest piece of evidence we have! Oh my god. What a roller coaster ride. Yo, Maya's dead. They're gonna kill Maya now. I didn't solve it in one day.